Hey, it's Clayton, registered dietitian, and today I'm gonna to talk about how much protein you should be eating to optimally build muscle during resistance training and give 10 examples of high protein snacks that require little to no prep and no cooking. Protein is a vital nutrient that has a wide range of important functions in the body. After eating protein, it gets digested into amino acids, which are then absorbed into the body through the lining of the small intestine. These amino acids are then used as building blocks for a variety of needs, which include the formation of the skeletal muscle, bones, connective tissue, hair, skin, nails, neurotransmitters, neuropeptides, and is also used in many glands, tissues, and organs throughout the body. The structures of our body that include protein, which is nearly every cell, are constantly being replaced with new proteins, which is why we need to eat protein every day to maintain normal function of our body. When you combine resistance training with eating protein in a surplus, you build muscle mass. This is also referred to as being in a positive nitrogen balance. The RDA, a recommended dietary allowance of protein, is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. But if you're over the age of 50, you should be consuming at least one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. However, this is simply the minimum amount of protein you should be consuming to prevent deficiency. So if you're strength training with the goal to build more muscle mass, it's recommended to consume 1.4 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight so that your body will have the optimal amount of resources to allocate to muscle protein synthesis to build muscle mass, as well as use the amino acids you've eaten for all the other important reasons we previously discussed. One would also need to be in a calorie surplus to most effectively put on muscle mass as well. This protein intake range comes from the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, their position stand on protein and exercise. They state for building muscle mass and for maintaining muscle mass through a positive muscle protein balance, an overall daily protein intake in the range of 1.4 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day is sufficient for most exercising individuals, a value that falls in line with the acceptable macronutrient distribution range published by the Institute of Medicine for Protein. Recommendations regarding the optimal protein intake per serving for athletes to maximize muscle protein synthesis are mixed and dependent upon age and recent resistance exercise stimuli. General recommendations are 0.25 grams of high quality protein per kilogram of body weight or an absolute dose of 20 to 40 grams. Spreading these feeding episodes approximately three hours apart has been consistently reported to promote sustained increased levels of muscle protein synthesis and performance benefits. So using myself as an example, I weigh 177.2 pounds and to convert pounds into kilograms, you divide your weight in pounds by 2.20462. This gives me a body weight of 80.38 kilograms. Then you multiply this number by 1.4, which gives me 112 grams, and again by 2, which gives me 160 grams. So I need a daily intake of 112 to 160 grams of protein while I'm weight training to build muscle mass optimally. Now let's get into some quick and easy high protein snack ideas that you can use in between meals or before bed to help prevent muscle catabolism and promote muscle protein synthesis and enable get the most out of your effort in the gym. The snacks on this list require no cooking or very little preparation. You should also pair your protein with a source of carbohydrate as well. So for each of the following examples, you might pair the protein item with fruit, whole grain crackers, whole grain bread, rice cakes, popcorn or milk, just to name a few examples. Snack idea number one, Greek yogurt. How can you go wrong? Greek yogurt is an excellent source of calcium and has 16 grams of protein for one serving of Greek yogurt. A serving is only three fourths of a cup. So you get 16 grams. And if, you know, this is plain non fat Greek yogurt, you mix a little bit of cinnamon with it, some vanilla extract or imitation vanilla extract is much cheaper, and throw some walnuts in there and dice up some apples, some berries, any fruit, banana, add some carbohydrate to it, and you got an excellent low calorie, high protein, high fiber, excellent snack. Additionally, what makes Greek yogurt so great is that it's made with live active cultures, or in other words, probiotics. So these healthy bacteria that we consume from the product make their way into our intestine. So our small, but mostly our large intestine harbors over a hundred trillion bacteria in it. And so the healthier our gut is, the healthier we are. And so by eating fermented foods once in a while and consuming healthy bacteria, we keep our bacteria population in our guts healthy. And for when you're really in a rush, drinkable Greek yogurt can come in handy. This little bottle has 20 grams of protein in it and all those live active cultures that we talked about before. And when you want a Greek yogurt that's already flavored for you, something that you don't have to scoop out of a tub, something that already comes in cups, something that's really easy that you can take to work for lunch or to school for lunch, these Oikos triple zeros come in really handy. So they have two different options. You can buy the 15 gram cup. This one is just Greek yogurt, or you can buy the 20 gram cup, which is Greek yogurt plus added whey protein to give it a boost. Up next, we have hard boiled eggs. What I love about hard boiled eggs as a dietitian is the ingredients list. It's so simple, just one ingredient, eggs. 
Eggs have a really high quality protein in them. Each egg is six grams of protein and 60 calories. So if you eat two eggs, that's 12 grams of protein. If you eat three eggs, that's 18 grams of protein. And also what I love about eggs is they have choline. Choline is something our body makes, but we also get it from food. Choline is used to make something called acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter used in memory and learning. So the more eggs you eat, the better brain health you'll have. Up next is cottage cheese, and especially fat-free cottage cheese has a really good macronutrient profile. For just a half a cup per serving, you get 13 grams of protein and only 80 calories. So what you can do with cottage cheese is when you blend it until smooth, you can use it as a substitution for cream cheese or sour cream in a recipe to boost the protein profile of whatever it is you're making. Next is mozzarella cheese sticks. A mozzarella cheese stick has six grams of protein and only 80 calories. They're easy to take on the go, pack for lunch at school or work, and if you're looking for a lower calorie option, you can buy the low fat mozzarella cheese sticks so that way you're getting the same amount of protein for less calories. Also, what's interesting about a mozzarella cheese stick is that it's made from one of the two main proteins in milk, casein. The other protein, whey, is left behind after the cheese is made, and that whey is then turned into protein powders that people buy as supplements. Next up is tuna fish packets, and in just one 2.6 ounce package of tuna fish, you get 17 grams of protein for only 70 calories. Tuna fish is a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, and one pouch will give you 160 milligrams of EPA and DHA. Omega-3 fatty acids may reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease, and some forms of cancer, such as breast cancer. Flavor it yourself and put it on some whole grain crackers, on a wrap, on a stalk of romaine lettuce, or just eat it out of the package itself. You can get the flavored kind, but it'll have a little less protein and a little more calories. Now chicken and beef bone broth. You get nine grams of protein for an eight ounce serving of both chicken and beef bone broth for 45 calories for the beef and only 40 calories for the chicken, making chicken bone broth the second highest protein item I'm gonna talk about today in terms of calories per gram of protein with tuna fish being the highest protein per calorie item. Heat it up and drink it as a nice hot beverage or use it as a base for soups. Now rotisserie chicken breast and smoked turkey breast slices. The chicken breast gives you 11 grams of protein for only 50 calories per two ounce serving. And the sliced turkey breast gives you 12 grams of protein for 50 calories per two ounce serving. Eat it as is or combine with cheese sticks and or crackers for a quick high protein snack. Next is jerky. And right now we have beef jerky. Beef jerky is an excellent source of protein for only 80 calories, you get 13 grams of protein per serving. Jerky comes in all sorts of forms. Now we have venison jerky. For 90 calories, you get 11 grams of protein. Turkey jerky, for 90 calories, you get 13 grams of protein. Elk jerky, for elk jerky, for 90 calories, you get 11 grams of protein. And salmon jerky. Salmon jerky, you get nine grams of protein for 100 calories. So whatever you're into, they make a jerky for it. Including beet jerky. Yeah, that is right, beet jerky. Now, as you probably guessed, this isn't very high in protein. It's only three grams of protein per 90 calories, but I thought this was funny. And when you're in a rush, a protein bar is a great go-to. What I love about RX bars in particular is the ingredients list. And as a dietitian, I love simple ingredients lists. Dates, egg whites, almonds, cashews, vanilla bean, and sea salt. That's it. So in other protein bars, you're gonna see a laundry list of ingredients. What's great about this, it's more whole foods based. You're gonna get your protein from your egg whites and your nuts. Lastly, we have protein powders. In this case, whey protein. If you're struggling to meet your protein intake for the day, that 1.4 to 2.0 grams per kilogram of body weight target protein range that you're shooting for, protein powders can come in really handy. Just one scoop of protein, in this case, has 24 grams of protein in it. And if you add a glass of milk to mix it with, that'll add another eight grams of protein, bringing the total protein content to 32 grams for a very small volume. What you're really looking for in protein powders is if they're third-party tested. So in this example, this is third-party tested by Informed Sport. Informed Sport will test every batch of protein powder that this company makes for banned substances. And also, they test the product quality to make sure that this company has exactly what it says on the label is actually in the product itself. So you can feel confident when you're buying protein powder, if it's third party tested, that it actually has what it says is in it because supplements, dietary supplements are not regulated by the FDA, which means they don't go through any testing before they hit the shelves. That's why you wanna do third party tested supplements only. 
Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite high protein snack is down in the comment section below and like and subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one.